The Syrian Arab army eliminates a number of terrorists, some of whom are non-Syrians. An international move has been observed following the ugly pictures circulated about the barbaric practices of Daesh in Sinjar, in addition to a photo of an Australian fighting in Syria within Daesh ranks, showing his little son playing with the head of a decapitated person. Shama talks of a center built in Al Malikia in the governorate of Al Hasaka to give shelter to 1,000 Iraqi families who have been deported by Daesh terrorists from Sinjar Mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. Prime Minister Dr. Wael al halaqi has received a cable of congratulation from Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev on the occasion of his appointment as the new Prime Minister to form the new Syrian government. Medvedev wished Dr. al halaqi success in forming the new cabinet. The Russian Prime Minister said, Going ahead in developing Russian-Syrian cooperation in the trade, economic, scientific, technical, cultural and humanitarian fields, and implementing joint projects in the domain of energy, industry and infrastructure conforms to the deeply rooted and solid interests and traditional partnership between the two friendly countries and peoples. Under the auspices of President Bashar al-Assad, Vice President Dr. Najah al-Attar inaugurated an exhibition entitled Palestine Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow at Al-Assad House for Culture and Arts in Damascus. This exhibition displays old images of Palestine to tell the story of its history. There are images of museums that had been plundered by the Zionists, in addition to many hospitals. This is the palace hotel. It was destroyed by the Zionists in Jerusalem. And this is the eighth station. It was called the Road of Pains in 1913. Several maps are displayed in the exhibition, showing the real borders of Palestine, in addition to other cities such as Jaffa and Gaza. Vice President Dr. Najah al attar asserted in her speech that what is happening in Gaza is not only a mere struggle between two sides, but it is an aggression on the Palestinian people. The political and media advisor at the presidency, Dr. Buthayna Shaban, asserted that the Israeli aggression on Gaza could not achieve its goals because the Palestinian resistance proved to be aware of the aggression's attempts, calling on the Arab people to support the Palestinian people. The aim of this exhibition is to tell people that Palestine is here, it has been in the past, it is in the present, it's going to be in the future. To remind people that no matter how horrible occupying forces are, the people who stand firm and who cling to their rights, no doubt, will prevail at the end. For his part, Deputy Foreign Minister Dr. Faisal al-Muqdad indicated that Syria, Palestine and Iraq have the same enemy. This is another manifestation of solidarity with the Palestinian people. We stand with the struggle of, this, of the Palestinian people. You see the same conspiracies. Uh, against the Palestinian people are themselves the conspiracies against Syria. The enemies of Palestine are themselves the enemies of Syria. Syria has always been not only supporting the Palestinian people, but we are in one struggle against the same, the same enemy. This exhibition is a gesture of Syria's solidarity with the Palestinian people. Syria has always supported the Palestinian cause and it is paying the price now. But Syria will never surrender. It will keep on defending the Palestinian cause no matter what. These paintings tell the story of a people who has always suffered from the heinous crimes that Israel commits against them. Vani Konjian, News in English, Syrian Arab Television. Minister of Social Affairs in the caretaker government, Dr. Kinda Shamat, has voiced the ministry's keenness on offering humanitarian and emergency aid to all the Syrian and Iraqi families alike who have been greatly damaged by the attacks of the terrorists of the so-called Islamic State in Syria and the Levant. 
Dr. Ashamad has pointed out that a makeshift complex in Al Malikia town in Al Hasaka province would provide shelter to about 1,000 displaced Iraqi families who have been forced to flee Sinjar Mountain due to the terrorist and criminal practices of the so called ISIS. A series of measures has started to be taken by Western countries recently in order to counter the threat posed by the terrorist groups, so-called the State of Iraq and Levant and Jabhat al-Nusra in the countries that they come from. The first international move comes after the international condemnation sparked by the photos published showing the brutal crimes committed by Daesh in Sinjar, where hundreds of Christians and Yazids were killed and hundreds of others were buried alive, in addition to pictures of an Australian fighting with Daesh in Syria, showing his little son playing with a severed head. Out of fear that the terrorists might hit back at their own countries, the United States and Australia try to cover their support for terrorism by referring the case of the foreign terrorists in Syria and Iraq into the UN, while the Security Council is preparing to discuss a British proposed draft resolution which aims at cutting off funding and military support to the terrorist groups of Daesh and Al Nusra and taking measures to stop the infiltration of the foreign terror ter terrorists to join the aforementioned two terrorist groups and punish those involved in their recruitment. Such measures raise questions at those Western countries are the same sides which supported the terrorists who committed brutalities in Syria, ignoring more than 600 warning letters submitted by the Syrian government to the UN Security Council, but the result was silence and deliberate negligence. Syrian Arab army units have killed scores of terrorists in Damascus and Dara countryside. A military source has said that Syrian Arab army units have intensified their operations in Al-Mleha and its surrounding areas and controlled a number of buildings after eliminating all the terrorists who were inside them. Other Syrian Arab army units have carried out many operations in Zabdin and Jusreen towns, killing and wounding many of the terrorists. In Dara countryside, Syrian Arab army units destroyed an armored vehicle and a pickup car, killing all the terrorists inside in the vicinity of Atman town. Other Syrian Arab army units have targeted terrorist gatherings in Inkhil in Dara countryside, Harit al-Bajabija and the vicinity of Ur Umm al-Daraj in Dara al-Balad, killing and wounding many of the terrorists. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has said that asking Mr. Haider Abadi to form the new cabinet was a manipulation of the Iraqi constitution in coordination with domestic and external sides, adding that such a measure is worthless and is not compatible with the constitution. He went on to say that the coalition of the state of law has proved that it is the biggest political bloc and that the federal court has plainly indicated that the biggest parliamentarian bloc has the right to form the new cabinet. Despite all of that, al-Maliki added, the constitution has been blatantly violated. The Turkish People's Party has said that reaching the top of the hierarchy of the Turkish state by figures who represent the dirty politics is a catastrophic result in the history of the Turkish state because for the first time the Turkish people witnessed a man like Recep Tayyip Erdogan who is involved in many crimes becoming the president of the republic. The opposing parties said in a statement that clean democracy and politics were the real loser in the presidential elections after the election of Erdogan as president of the state of Turkey. Finally, in addition to the usual services presented by any public hospital in the country, Ibn Nafi's hospital attached to the Minister of Health presents exclusively all medical services regarding all kinds of diseases and surgeries free of charge within the work of the Damascus Health Directorate. Head of Ibn Nafis Hospital, Dr. Naji Zahir, says the hospital offers emergency services and shoulders huge burdens in cases of war, natural catastrophes, and some catching epidemics which require a state of full alert. The hospital also offers the necessary medicines for some chronic diseases to patients from all governorates in the country. It is very much crowded and its medical cadres are exposed to enormous pressure. The hospital 
hospital receives 1,600 visitors every day. The intensive care section is considered one of the largest and most active in Damascus. It receives some of the most critical cases and about 70 patients every month. The hospital presents big services to citizens, particularly patients of chronic diseases, who usually need highly expensive medicines like sclerosis infected patients. The cost of treatment offered to a single patient would be two million stream pounds, delivered free of charge. Another example is patients of ankylosing spondylitis, in which case every dose costs 180,000 stream pounds. A patient would need more than one dose every year. They are usually offered free of charge. Other examples are patients with hepatitis B and C diseases, which costs 1,800,000 pounds. It is also offered free of charge. Even the medical analysis is made at a cost of more than 15,000 pounds. The analysis is conducted with the PCR device, which has cost 85 million Syrian pounds. We thank the hospital for the services they present. We have been warmly welcomed by the medical cadres. The medicines are available free of charge and surgeries are made free of charge too. I am an escort of a patient who is now in the operations room. In our laboratory in Ibn Nafis Hospital, we have a central, two departments, two main departments. Uh, first one we call it the central laboratory and the second we call it emergency laboratory. Uh, in the in the part in central departments we have uh, a hematology uh, department and uh, uh, immunology serology, uh, adding to uh, bacteriology and uh, and PCR uh, laboratory. Uh, our laboratory uh, is uh, in the first of the. Uh, laboratories in our uh, ministry because we have a lot of tests we do it we do it uh, we do uh, about uh, about 102 tests every day we have about uh, five uh, uh, five uh, hundred patients every week uh, it is one of the biggest hospital in damascus you are here in the liver center we are healing here the patient of chronic hepatitis B and C uh, liver diseases. Uh, our medicine, of course, it is very free. It is very free, totally free. Uh, in addition of the whole analysis, uh, we give the medicine free, which we call it uh, uh, biglated interferon. This medicine is very expensive. It's about uh, yearly, it's about uh, two million Syrian pound. Uh, we are control the whole patient in uh, Syria. We are we receive our patients from the whole region of Syria, from the north to the south. The hospital's directorate seeks to win the patient's confidence in this health institution. It affirms that this confidence would be more consolidated when the hospital receives more support at all levels in order to motivate its cadres and medical and technical expertise to develop its services further in all domains. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Kassam, but after a short break.